Welcome to Through the Ringer. I'm your host, Tate Frazier. We got a very fun show today. The Ringer's very own Brian Curtis is going to be joining us. But first and foremost, we're back in the building with Cousin Sam. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. Thank you for having me. I know you had your choice. I mean, there's a yeah. thousand Ringer employees. They're all about, outside. About They're all listening to us, right? Us. Yeah. yeah, a lot I don't of chatter. Know what they're doing. Yeah, if you hear something in the background, it's probably Sean Fennessy or someone important having a conversation outside. But Are you saying Sean Fennessy isn't important? No, he is, is Sean important. Fennessy he's he's having or someone important. He's having very, very important conversations I behind see. us okay. uh, right. oh, but right cool. now we're gonna have our conversation yeah. not as important but you know we're gonna have no, some we're gonna fun make here it. we're gonna yeah. make it, make it important yeah. let's start here first tate sal we got mm-hmm. some uh, takes from this weekend and i start right. here it's happening again i see it i see it three pete i say to you sal the chiefs are gonna win the super bowl again and uh Ooh. maybe this is a reverse jinx attempt i don't know but after watching football last undefeated team uh, it feels inevitable uh, how do you feel about it that? it really does i hope this is a reverse jinx no, please I, is it only a three-peat i feel like this would be like seven <laughs> in a row or something. too many is what it is i had the bills beating the lions in the beginning of the year i'm stubborn i'm gonna stick with it mm. but i am so surprised that this chiefs team based on if you would have mapped it out for me and said all right through seven weeks mahomes has six touchdowns and eight interceptions i'm like oh that's a four and three finally team. everyone's freaking right. out they're gonna have to trade for Devonte adams or something no they're undefeated and hats off to spags right this defense mm-hmm. is incredible i think five of the six opponents they get no credit by the way like no one even talks it's, about the defense stupid. you're really one of the few people that will talk because about the defense. he gets overshadowed by andy Reid, and mm-hmm. then mahomes on the other side but five of their six games they've held opponents to under 24 points um, and like I said, subpar season for Mahomes, and it just seems like they're just going to keep rolling. Plus 450 right now to win the Super Bowl. So is this one of those things where we just bet this now? We put some money down on plus 450 because the odds are only going to get yeah. worse and worse as the season rolls so on. That's I how I feel. Thing, I put it away for my kids. It's a fun. I bet the <laughs> Chiefs every year, and I bet Mahomes to win MVP. And, you know, every three years, one or both of those is going to hit. So it's like just like a, a mutual fund. It builds and it builds. Right. I don't necessarily root for it. I do other things also but i don't know it's better than an ira i think i think this is the this is the way of the future so cousin sal laying it down for you i got another first date sal Robert Sala, he won the week. Uh, mm-hmm. Obviously, he had cameras. TMZ follows him to the supermarket, and they <laughs> ask him yeah, conversations. Right, right. We've seen all that. But it does feel like the Jets, um, the defense has not looked as great. They continue to lose games. Aaron Rodgers is running out of fall guys at this point, Sal. And the more that we look around, we say, Sala, not as bad as we thought. So he's the big winner, I think. It's great. I mean, what a smile <laughs> he must have had on his face. I oh, hope yeah. he didn't get stuck watching he's, the That the big Mets smile. Everybody out. remembers that infectious right? smile he had. I mean, what's right. your <laughs> FU moment? What's your big FU moment? Mm. Has it happened yet? I think Coach K losing in the final it's four. It's going to feel good. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, but Coach K didn't fire you. I know, you're, you're just a little <laughs> fan rooting for you. I want to be personal. Whatever, we'll talk about it afterwards. I'll figure but it yes, out, right? You've got to love it that they're 2-5. and five. They were better with Zach Wilson, 3-4, mm. and four and had more points. Good for you, Robert Sala. You also weren't weren't great. Um, but, uh, yeah, he's probably off doing ayahuasca somewhere celebrating. And he's probably going to get another job, you know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, he's living the dream. So shout out to Sal. I'd love to see that. Last one, last first date here. This is a good one. Um, expanding the college football <laughs> playoff has made the regular season even more exciting, Sal. There were some you know, doubters, detractors at the start, but I think yeah. it's even better now. Everybody's in the game. What an egotist you are. I wrote this, <laughs> I wrote this topic. This is a good one. It's this a good is one, one of my best. Um, no, but you're right. It is exciting now. It's going to be even nuttier in a month. We are going to be stuck in a position where there's going to be nine SEC slash Big Ten teams, mm-hmm. and we're going to have to decide – which five or six of them go, and oh. it's just going to be bedlam. It's probably going to be worse than FSU getting kicked out of the dance last year. So good for you. Luckily, Alabama's making it a little easier. Right, and now yeah. you got like uh, on the back end, right? Notre Dame, they just kind of stay at twelve, right? So they're going to be in that car. It, it, it's funny, the Army like... and Navy competing at this <laughs> right. point. They're both they're undefeated. Yeah. So and the, there's a game uh, against Notre Boise Dame State this right in the mix. So, I mean, it's some fun yeah. teams, and uh, like you said, it is funny to see the SEC and the Big Ten. They want to be a super conference, but they're still going to have to deal with the same headaches that they dealt with before. We just right. get more more headaches, which no, it is should even better. Be, it should be a super conference. 36 teams, it's good. You play yeah. a, a fifth of the conference. It's uh, That makes sense. I Come saw on. that they were trying to create Project Rudy was the name of it, and it's 70 oh. teams, and they're all competing against <laughs> each other, and I was like, I think that might be the NCAA wow. at some point. You know what I, mean? I think Who that's knows? the hallway right now with the Spotify <laughs> Pro- employees. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now we get to play my favorite game. Okay. I, I know that it's, uh, you know, your favorite 
favorite game, maybe. Maybe, yeah, yeah. maybe one of yours. No, not Joe not, House's favorite game. We right. do remember that. Uh, let's play over under reaction, Sal. I say to you, first one, the Lions won the Jared Goff trade. Mm. In fact, just call it the Jared Goff trade is, uh, I think, a win right there. Over under reaction. I, I don't even remember who he was traded for, the way you <laughs> positioned it. No, it was for Stafford. Right. And this is a tough one. All right, I'm going to say over reaction for now because they brought Stafford to L.A. to win a title. And he did it. And he did it. And yeah. now everybody is in SoFi wearing Rams jerseys all the time. No, that, that part's not true. <laughs> okay, next one, Sal. The Steelers should continue to play both Wilson and Fields for the remainder of the, se- uh, the season over or under reaction. How do you feel about yeah, that? Yeah, under reaction. You know, mm-hmm. I wasn't one of those that were screaming, yeah, this is crazy to take Justin Fields <laughs> out. He's not the quarterback of the future, right? And they paid each of these guys a million and a half dollars. You might as well go and see what you had the other guy has, right? And Wilson was pretty good. But I'm not going to also take a lap either because we're definitely going to see some bad games out of him. Maybe not this week against the Giants. So, Keep doing the thing. Tomlin seems to have the magic touch. Whatever he does, don't 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 go against him. Yeah, don't doubt Mike Tomlin. He also had the 12 uh, men on the field penalty where he kind of did a little tip of the cap to Rodgers in the game. Right. I mean, it was uh, a master class there from our guy Mike Tomlin. Next one, South Sunday was the last time we see Deshaun Watson as the quarterback of the Cleveland Browns. Mm. Obviously an ugly scene in Cleveland with the Achilles injury and the crowd cheering, but uh, how do you feel over or under reaction? The last that? time we see him as quarterback, like we won't ever see him on Twitter. We'll uh, never see him. Okay, no, <laughs> the, never the, everything's yeah. erased from the yeah, internet. He's gone, right? I think it's an overreaction, believe it or not. This franchise so is so inept that he'll, you know, he'll make a comeback next year. And watch, the team will be 5-1 and one with Jameis Winston. And they're like, all right, we got to put our guy right. in because our we're franchise guy is right. back. We're He's paying healthy. him all this money. He's right. back. He wants to play. He doesn't look like he wants to play, but trust us. Jameis had quite the speech after the game. Yeah. Uh, very motivational, uh, to say the least. If you haven't seen that, go check that out. So, next one, Sal. <laughs> Lamar Jackson will repeat as the NFL MVP over or under reaction. Mm. He's the favorite right now. He is. It flipped. It was for the first time this year. It was Mahomes, and now it's Lamar. And it's probably, that's fair. It's right. fair. After five touchdowns, and that offense looks great. And Mark Andrews, who everybody dropped in fact, Fantasy is also might be the top ten tight end mm-hmm. right now in the league. There just seem to be so many guys open, so much this, so much that. I think there's also so much voter fatigue for Lamar Jackson. I'm going to go with the aforementioned Jared Goff if he keeps it up, and they're a one seed or a one or a two seed right in there. Because I think what's going to happen here, Tate, is Derrick Henry is going to steal some votes from Lamar Jackson. Like he's, he's never had to deal with that before. But he's having he's on pace to break Dickerson's record. So mm-hmm. that has to be in, taken into account when you taking when you look at the Ravens success. And I will say Lamar is probably better off for him if he doesn't win MVP, right? Because yeah. people want to see it in the playoffs. Right, and right, if right. you're Lamar, you're just like, all right, let Derek get the votes, he's you know, let now. Goff get, Yeah, right. right. I'm a, I'm past that. I want to actually win yeah. uh, when it comes to the playoffs. So, I, I like that. Next one, Sal, we're going to miss waking up on Sunday for the London game mm. over or under reaction. We are going to miss the Jaguars out there. Uh, I'm going to say overreaction because I'm not going. Well, I'm still. I still have to wake up. We do the Ring <laughs> yeah, of Pregame right. show, right? With You're going to be up regardless. And House and Raheem. You're going to have more people watching. I'll probably. be there, and that's yeah. exactly right. I could at least the illusion that people are watching us mm-hmm. now. At least we had an excuse before, like, well, everyone's watching the game. I had but, you guys yeah. on the iPad, and you I'm did? watching the game on the big sound screen. down yeah. though. You didn't know. Sound audio. up. I got to hear did? JJ's <laughs> takes. Come on. Uh, but I did enjoy the Coach Middle seat jokes and Doug Peterson. Is he coming back? I don't even know if he's. Coming back. I guess so I'll miss is. that a little yeah. bit. I yeah. like the Wake and Drake. That was yeah. fun. I only watched the first 10 points of the game. I turned it off, Sal. And what then... do you do? You're a big, big party. A big... I won't even get into it, but no. when you were out there, just a few, well, I won't get into it, but how is it for you waking up early on a Sunday? I love it. I you just, do. Watch Drake May play football. I'm ready. Okay. I'm already locked in. <laughs> I wish true. you played for a different team, but that's right. a different story for a different day. <laughs> Let's talk about your team, Sal. Uh, uh, Mets fans uh, should be glad their team lost to the Dodgers and not the Yankees. If it was going to end without a World Series, uh, over or under reaction? How do you feel about that? Uh, I mean, I can only speak for myself. This for this Met fan, it's an under reaction. Now mm-hmm. it might be different from everybody else, but it is the worst result in sports for me. If the Yankees beat the Mets, I went right. through it twenty four years, almost a quarter of a century ago, I and I was there alive. And it was disgusting, and no one should have to live through that again. Mike Piazza, man. Piazza flies out to Bernie Williams. I, I took know. off. I was on the seven train before it even, you know, before. When I think of a World Series, I think of that series for yeah. whatever reason. You, you do? Know? It was that, that age that rough, I was at. Yeah. Rough, rough, rough. Uh, you know, and I hated Chase Utley for the Dodgers. I hated that team, but the bottom line is I have 
way more a-hole Yankee fan friends than I do Dodgers. And you, I'm including you in the mix. <laughs> yeah, I'll yeah. take it. Yeah. Uh, I will say, I, I as for Yankees fans out there, it's probably a good thing they don't have to play the Mets because right. the, the Mets would add house money going up against the Yankees. The pressure on the Yankees, they, they would have folded, uh, I think. Been so. Pressure all around. You should do a cap of <laughs> consequence. You should do a bet with our producers, yeah. all right. right? Chris yeah. and Jack, Come big on. Dodger fans, yeah. why not? Let's do it. All right. I'll figure it out. We're going to get, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna get someone's going to be embarrassed. <laughs> someone's, it'll be me. Uh, let's keep it going, Sal. The final five minutes and overtime of the WNBA finals ruined what was otherwise a great season. Over mm. under reaction. A lot of missed shots in this game. Uh, Sabrina Ionescu, one for 20 from the field. And really cra- crazy to see. I'm going to say under reaction, but there's a caveat here. And it, stu- it sucks that there was such a spotlight on those last five minutes when it was a successful season. I mean, it, but but those last five minutes were brutal. Mm-hmm. I mean, missed travel. Uh, a kind of phantom foul call that got us into overtime. I don't right? know. Brittany Griner could have accidentally stepped on a plane going to Kiev, and that, that would have maybe made it worse. But yeah. otherwise, it was all bad. You're right. Yes, traveling. There was yeah the coach on the sideline getting caught on the mic talking, uh, telling Stewie, yeah, yeah, sell the foul. <laughs> sell you need to exaggerate. Foul. And they're like, whoa, whoa, where's the audio? We got to figure this out here. So that was bad. And now they might go on strike. Yikes. I think no it good. was yeah. I think it was one of those things where they almost went to NBA, right? Yes, you know exactly. I mean? Yeah, exactly. Like yeah, they, they they followed the wrong uh, template there. I had to tell the NBA. I'm like, hey Simmons, <laughs> calm down with this because this is your this is right. basically you guys NBA created this monster. Right so the if anything, don't blame the threes. WNBA. You guys right. did this. So yeah. if anything, they can point the finger. That would be a good idea. Uh, next one, Sal. The Big Ten is now officially the best conference in college football. Oregon mm. going to be the number one team in the country. Is that an over sure. or under reaction? I love it. I'm going to say under reaction, but it is tough because we. We've seen a lot of these SEC teams beat up on each other. And yes. then we've seen the Vanderbilts and the Kentuckys and the South Carolinas step up, too, mm-hmm. when they weren't supposed to. So I can't tell I can't tell who's great in the Big Ten yet. I know Ohio State and, and Oregon probably are. Penn State probably is. Mm. Indiana, though, undefeated. Like, there's I weird stuff Indiana. like that. Yeah. But the fact is, they're doing it without the benefit of a good Michigan team. Can you imagine? The Big Ten could be the best conference, and Michigan's going to be nowhere to be found. Yeah, the national champions. Right? Uh, yeah, they're not even a talking point. Uh, it does feel like Penn State, it would be nice for them to have a good showing. I'm not going to say they're going to beat Ohio State, but just to at least show up, make it a game. It does feel like every single time Penn State has yeah. that big game, they no-show. So, James Franklin, maybe this is the chance. And if they do play well, they can send Tough a game this week. They're on the road against Wisconsin. They're less than a touchdown favorite. Wisconsin's been playing well. Right. It's going to be tough. Uh, let's talk about the Raiders. I say to you, Sal, this is a fun one. This is a mm. college football related, little tangential stuff here. The Raiders should tank, draft Shador Sanders, and then also hire Coach <laughs> Prime. Uh, over or under reaction, your thoughts? I've heard this. Um, <laughs> you know, Al Davis might have done this in his heyday. <laughs> I think Al Davis's ghost may have written this it, in it, the over or under reactions. Yes. On a Ouija board, he pushed <laughs> yes. it through. Yeah, in furtherance of this commitment it's like to Beetlejuice you know you say his name three times he shows up I know this team is bad and the current coach mo- might be more interested in covering the spread than getting a W but you can't do this if you do this <laughs> if you hire I'm, I'm all right with Shador but if you hire mm. Deion Sanders he has shown many many times that he is not uh, he's not college worthy coaching wise X's and O's time management everything else um, if you do that, you might as well move the home games to Circus Circus in, in Las Vegas because that's what it's going to be. Yeah, look good, feel good, play yeah. good. They pay good. This is the oh, a ton of Coach shirts. Prime nope. standard. That's nope. what he wants. Print a ton of T-shirts up with that. But <laughs> Smoking no a lot good. of cigars after a week three win, right. that's for sure. Last one, Sal. It's never too early to tank in the NBA over or under reaction. We already see guys sitting out game one. I mean, mm-hmm. so how, how do you feel about this tanking thing? This is the main reason I want to avoid that mob of 75 people. People out there because they're already talking. It's October 23rd. Yeah. They're already talking about tanking in the NBA, mm-hmm. and it's disgusting with this Cooper, Cooper flag. flag. Everybody yes. wants them. Is there going to be a tank podcast? I got to mention this mm-hmm. to Simmons. There should be a ringer tank pot where they all they do is talk about tanking because that's all that anyone's going to do. This Cooper flag should make it easy and just announce that he's playing in Albania next year. Yeah, and then we don't have to hear about it. The Wouldn't NBA nice? is going to go to Australia or yeah. something. I already yeah. see the headline right now: waving the white flag with two G's. Mm. Uh, this is the oh. ringer piece of the century, right? I mean, you know how this is going to go. Let that be the podcast. You can host it. <laughs> yes. There you go. Waving the white you know flag. Let's put a Don't blindfold. throw in the white flag like Harry would did. say. No, right. no. He says throw in the white flag. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wave the towel. Throw in the white flag. <laughs> you don't get anything done. I want you to go out there. You're going to okay. host this new podcast. Yeah. What would you say? The, throw white, flag. the white flag. Waving the, waving white, the flag. white flag. Yeah, yeah right. Right. 
I want you to put a blindfold <laughs> on, and the first person you touch on the head, that's your podcast partner. Okay, perfect. Let's do it. We'll go out yeah, there. Yeah, let's do it. That, that's how we got It'll OSP it figured out. Yep. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> that's an easy thing. Let's do some prop culture, Sal. Let's okay. uh, call up here because we got a lot of things happening. We're going to call up the Riverboat captain. He's got a big question. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm talking about Cleveland sports here, Sal. What's the most embarrassing slash cringy moment in Cleveland sports fans' history? Wow. Which is a very long lineage. Shout out to the long-suffering Cleveland fans. Let's start here. The favorite, burning LeBron James' jersey after the decision is the favorite at 2-1, to one, cheering for Deshaun Watson as he likely tore his Achilles or ACL 5-1. to one. Uh, Tencent, beer night, Indians mm. forced to forfeit the game. That was a 10-1 to one odds. Enjoying the film draft day unironically. <laughs> uh, very seriously, it's 50-1. to one, right. And we got the field at even odds. What say you, Sal? Well, these are excellent, excellent choices. LeBron jersey, yeah, the bad. It, it's all bad and embarrassing. <laughs> I remember they couldn't open the cooler until they won. They, mm-hmm. they put a whole thing. That was another thing, too. I'm going to go with, I think you have the wrong jersey one up there. I'm going to go field and go with wearing the jersey of the 38 starting quarterbacks. Oh, yeah, right. With Tim Couch. It the, says Couch the on the one, back. Right. Because this is a triple whammy. It's Got embarrassing for the there. team. Yep. It's embarrassing mm. for the franchise. <laughs> it's embarrassing for, you know, th- this unfortunate loser who bought the shirt and has to wear this around, you know. it's a, I love it. It's a left-right, left combination. So this is my winner. I'm, I'm a big fan of that. I'm going to go with cheering for LeBron's Lakers title. Uh, during the pandemic, they showed oh. Cleveland, and there were fans – celebrating LeBron winning a title with the Lakers. That, to me, was the most embarrassing moment. Right. This guy left you twice at the altar. He said that he won you a championship and all that sort of stuff, and that's why he was allowed to leave. Yeah. I just It didn't sit right with me. That that was the most embarrassing moment I've ever seen, it so I'm going to go with the field as yeah, well. Yeah, that, that's no good. I don't know what the, the, the psychological term for that would be because <laughs> I didn't go to school, really. But, yeah, that that's bad stuff. I, yeah, I don't know. Stockholm Syndrome? Care. I don't know. <laughs> Something. Yeah. LeBron doesn't care. He's three wives removed from Right, him. and yeah. he was going to L.A. the whole time. Exactly. Uh, he used you guys. Uh, but Cleveland fans, we're, we feel for you here on this show. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we got some line look aheads and some track to the futures with Cousin Sal. Yeah. Welcome back through the ringer. We're here with Cousin Sal. We've had some fun, did some prop culture, but now we got to do some line look aheads. Oh, so this is not going to be fun. No, we're going to have a little uh, bit of fun. Okay. Not as much fun as my playing <laughs> my favorite right, game, I'll... but we're going to have a little bit of fun. Let's start with Thursday Night Football, which is its own kind of fun. It's like mm-hmm. Schadenfreude. I mean, it's like uh, we all laugh at each other's misery if we as we watch these games. Right. This could be a good one, though. we got Vikings at Rams. Rams plus three in this one. Total 48 and a half. What do you like in this game, Sal? I'm leaning towards the Rams a little here. I, mm. I predicted. Whatever. I think it back to back losses well, for the Vikings. Yes, exactly. Right? It's like, oh, the Vikings can't be undefeated forever. They got to mm-hmm. start losing one score games. And we saw that against the Lions, even though they almost came back and won. I feel like the short week coming off that emotional, you know, division game, this kind of bites them here. They're going into Rams territory, into SoFi. I think Sean McVay kind of played his cards right. He could have pl- played Cooper Cup on Sunday, but then he's like, we have a game four days later. Now we're going to see Cooper Cup, I think, on Thursday. And, yeah, I like him on a tease. I should also mention I've lost my last three Thursday night games. Um, I was – sorry, I lost my last four. I won the first three. <laughs> I don't know Fandle how you – forces me to say this as a disclaimer. <laughs> I don't know how you win on Thursday night because yeah. nothing makes sense. And, mm-hmm. and I think that's really the toughest part you about think it. my Saints pick was that, good no, last I, week? Yeah. I'd pick the Saints to score the first in the game you yeah. know, and lose the game eventually, but it was they the opposite. score yeah. eventually, I think. Yeah. Eventually. Yeah. It was tough. So uh, what do you, you, think? you what do, do you think like – I think in this one, I don't Honestly, I, I like the Vikings, okay. um, but it don't does feel, feel like. Don't apologize. No, they're I, the favorite. I, I, I just don't. I don't think the Vikings are going to lose that game. I think they're a better team, but mm-hmm. we'll see what happens. This does feel like a McVay moral victory, right? They get cut back. They win this game. They beat a team that's, you know, top in their division. So, yeah. um, you know, well, I guess now second after they lost the Lions. But you like props in this game as well. What yeah. prop do you like here? Uh, Stafford over 235 and a half park, mm. uh, not parking, <laughs> parking spots. Yeah, he's going to park. He has there, a lot there of cars. There are a lot of parking spots Ton, in SoFi. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be costly, but passing yards. It's passing yards, 235 and a half. I did all right with this last week with mm-hmm. Goff. Uh, can, you know, coincidentally, we compared them earlier. The trends favor a big night for Stafford, over 236 and four of his last five, over 34 completions. Mm-hmm. In, uh, I'm sorry, attempts in four of the last five, over 35 yards is his longest completion in four of the last five. Plus, he's got his receiver back. He's going against the 30th past 
defense. You wouldn't think that about the Vikings, but they're number 30 in the league. What do I sign, Tate? I love this. I like this, too. Yeah, this is good. I think there's good value there, and I, uh, you know, I'm going to take a prop as well that is, you know, with Stafford. Cooper Cup, anytime touchdown, Mm. you can get that at plus 125. I feel like you said it. McVay held him out for this game specifically. They're going to have some plays drawn up for him, and Cooper Cup is going to make his quarterback happy, and I think he's going to get a touchdown. And the last time we saw Cup at the start of the year, he looked great. You know, really before did. he got hurt. Let's do a fun track to the future here. We're talking about the NFC West. Uh, favorites right now, 49ers at minus 105. You got the Seahawks plus 240. Cardinals plus 400. Kyler Murray showing some signs. Rams plus 1,000. Mm. And you were a little bit interested and intrigued by the idea of the Rams here. I am. Well, I picked them. They were my preseason pick, and mm-hmm. then they got banged up and everything. We saw all these. But it is still kind of close. They're, you know, they win this, and they're a game out, I believe, of the first place, and they hold on to Cooper Cup. That would That would have to happen. For this to happen. So I think like 10 to 1, I just like the 10 to 1 at this point. Look, it's the Niners are favored, even though they're a game back, but they already beat Seattle and they have another one against Seattle. I just kind of like the Rams at 10 to 1. Um, they have the, if they win this, they have the Patriots, the Saints, the Jets, and the Cardinals again in a revenge game. They could be around nine or ten wins, which would be enough for McVay and company to take that title. Yeah, I'm. We I talked about McVay earlier. I'm a big fan, and I like those odds at ten to one. Let's talk about college football because these are not tough times. Sal, mm-hmm. you're on a heater. You have yeah. uh, three straight games, and if you'd taken Sal's uh, picks plus eighteen eighty seven uh, for those three 1887, games, eighteen eighty seven. Also, the last time I picked three games in a row. So <laughs> yes. it's a it all, it's a good year. Makes sense. It's yeah. a good year. It was <laughs> early days, you know what I mean? Uh, MSU is who you got last week over Iowa. This week, who do you like, Sal? I'm going to take Utah. I'm sorry, Houston. Oh, I already screwed up. <laughs> I screwed up. What do I do? Houston plus 136 over Utah. The Utes have lost three consecutive games. Houston mm-hmm. doesn't look great either. They have quarterback. They have a quarterback out, but Utah seems lost without Cam Rising. He is not going to play the rest of the year. He will play next year as a 35-year-old um, <laughs> yes. six. Year. Officially it's longer a, in school than Van Wilder, which is, is supposed is? to be a you know a fantastical wow. story about a guy in college for seven years. Yeah, yeah. we're talking like Animal House stats right. at this point. It's yeah. crazy. But uh, Mekai Muse, six passes, 99 yards, receiving with a touchdown. He gets a go-ahead score, and the Cougars win this week. We could go for four straight if you take Houston over Utah this week, so we'll be pulling for the Cougars. I'm going to go with UCF. I am not on a heater. Oh, yeah. I am on the opposite. I am you freezing. You won first, and then won the first, and then together. just frigid. It took Oklahoma against Texas. That was I was one was week close, off on so Texas, close. right? Yeah. One week off right, on whatever right. was going to happen to Texas. Uh, last true. week took Georgia Tech and Atlanta. Mm. Notre Dame <laughs> played a great game. Absolutely dominated them. This week, I'm going to take UCF at home. They're taking on number 11 BYU, plus 104 like in this one. And, you know, you get a little bit of value here, and I do feel like BYU is great at home. Not so much the same team on the road, so maybe UCF Riding a little upset. high. I yeah. like this. I like right. this buy low thing. Okay, come on, let's All go right. UCF. I need the Knights to do something for me. 2016 national champs, mm-hmm. UCF. So we'll see what go what goes on there. So college football, Sal's on a heater. Keep up with him. My picks, you know, maybe fade him. We'll see what happens. Let's do something fun here. NBA basketball is back. Have you heard about this? I Sal? heard. I, Did you I, hear the chatter? A little rumble, yeah, the banging on the walls there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Joel and B. That's all you hear. Yeah, well, he's crazy. not back. No, he's, he's not, not back. back. They yeah. can say that, but so he's let, not back. Let's yeah. talk about this line. Look yeah. ahead. We got Bucks at Philly. Mm-hmm. Philly plus three and a half in this game. Um, who do you like in this one? It's Again, no MB, no right. Paul George. Right. It flipped because because of those announcements. Right. Initially, Philly was favored, but this is and I have a buddy as a big basketball fan. He's like, "What do you think happened?" I know Lombardi was like, "What happened mm. all all off season?" <laughs> Where well, I was like. Well, he's an NBA player. He's yeah. part of the National Basketball Association. That's, That's what, what they happens. do. He said he's not going to play back to backs anymore. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's not so he's even not playing do front it. to anything. He's not. Well, I don't <laughs> no know. No front to back. How he wipes, but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, sh- shocking, shocking. I like the box in this. Yeah, of course. And you have a prop bet as well that you like. Uh, Lillard over three and a half threes. He had four or more in all mm. four games against the Pacers. They were bounced early in that round. Um, his chemistry, according to Doc Rivers, his chemistry is better than ever <laughs> with Giannis, and yeah. he's he's in shape. Which he basically called him a fat slob last mm-hmm. year, and so there we go. I think Lillard hits four or more threes, and you get a plus number. I do think the Bucks are on a redemption tour this year. I think last year, obviously, the the Griffin experience did not work. They bring mm-hmm. in Doc midseason. Dame was dealing with moving from Portland to, mm-hmm. to you know Milwaukee and his whole family stuff. So I think they're going to have a big year, and I think they're going to win this game. I'm so just going to sit here and nod, but if you right. really want some interaction, you can go. I don't you know, go out there and talk to him. Yeah, there's yeah. some NBA holes. I want to hear this. Uh, Bucks money. 
line in this one, Sal. It's not plus oh. money, but minus 168. It okay. was plus money right. before the announcements. But again, Joel Embiid not going to play in this mm-hmm. one. But I do like the Bucks, And uh, I saw the over-under spot. That everybody went under on the Bucks, Sal. So uh, maybe they got a little chip on their shoulder. I'm only on hour 13. Do not spoil it for me. <laughs> I need to see how that ends. Uh, well, let's do our own version of this. Let's okay. track to the future. Let's do our NBA champion and NBA MVP. Uh, obviously, Bill has a vote, so he can't talk MVPs. But right. we can on this show. Who do you like, NBA champ, and then we'll talk MVP? Uh, champ, I'm going Knicks, plus 750. Mm. You probably should bounce back with the Celtics a little bit, but I'd be very surprised if that wasn't the Eastern Conference final. I like what the Knicks did in the offseason. It's a head-scratcher. Everyone's like, how are they putting these together? The only problem is, does Tibbs kill these guys? Does he kill them? <laughs> yes. Does he literally run them into yes. the ground by April? Then that could be a problem. But otherwise, I like this, plus 750, and I think people are going to wish they had it come April. Yeah, and I will say, they're going to have a good regular season, too, and yeah. the Knicks are kind of built for the regular season. I think Jalen Brunson is going to have a big year. They have built their team to beat the Celtics, mm-hmm. so if that's who they're playing in the you know conference semifinals or conference finals, they have a team built to beat them. Great game last night. Pro- yeah. Proved exactly what you're right, saying. Right, exactly. Yeah. So there you go. Uh, so I, I like that, plus 750. I'm going to get the Mavericks. Uh, I think the Mavericks got, and they started celebrating a little bit too early last year. They beat the right. Timberwolves, and then I think they thought they are going to handle business pretty easily against the Celtics. Celtics are the the best defensive team in basketball. I think they learned that lesson. So Mavs, plus 1,100. I like Klay like Thompson joining this team, and I think that they're going to be really good this year. Luka is going to be in that MVP conversation. Um, but is that who you like for I like MVP? that. In the, well, well, first of all, I did take the Mavs in the West at plus 490, okay, so I like that. So you're, I'm going to lose – I'm definitely going to lose. So can they win the title but not win the West? Yeah. I don't know. Okay. we got to figure out a way to get that there for you. SGA, I'm going for uh, MVP. Okay. But about plus 430, went for 36 and 6 last year. More importantly, he had 15 first place votes, right? Mm-hmm. So it was Jokic, and then like no one else really had first place votes. You got to have the votes. It's the same guys every year. We know one of them. You know, if we have to rough them up a little bit, so be it. SGA, I like it. And everyone likes OKC. So. Yeah, everyone likes OKC yeah. in the media, which is a big mm-hmm. part of this. And I will say there is fatigue with the usual suspects, Jokic, Giannis, Luke. I, you know, even Luke, mm-hmm. even though he hasn't won it, I still feel like there's voter right. fatigue out there for him. I'm going to go someone brand new as well, Anthony Edwards. I just like the oh. value. Plus 850. It oh, is his very team. good. I heard some guys he, talking yeah, about Yeah, he's really yes. special is yeah. what they're saying. They're saying out there <laughs> that he's special. Kind of uh, plus 850. I like the odds there. Uh, I just like the personality. I think he's going to sell himself to the American public, and we're all going to buy into the hype. Oh. So Anthony Edwards, MVP. Right. I like it. Plus 850. So we got two new guys there. Let's talk baseball because the World Series is we fascinating. It's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. I know you don't want to talk about it because it is a little bit of a sore subject, but we got the Yankees taking on the Dodgers starting this weekend. Yankees plus 104, Dodgers minus 122. Dodgers are the favorite. Who do you like in the series? <sighs> I like to bury myself. I don't want to see, you know, I mean, the Dodgers handle don't my do that. Don't do that. Don't bury yourself. All right, I won't. I'll be alive, but I just want to bury myself. I have Dodgers in six. I okay. think it's going to be a long series. And, like, there's no dominant pitching, you know, no pitching is dominant over the other, I don't think. So it tends to favor a longer series. Before last year, five of the last six went six or seven. I'm going Dodgers in six. You get a good number there. I think they get nice innings and a Bueller, Flaherty, mm-hmm. and Alamoda. So Yankees bats cool down. Sorry, producer Jack and Chris. Well, you should. I'm sorry. I'm taking the Dodgers because that means bad things for you. I I'm know. going I, against your Yankees. Yeah, I know. I'm, like? I'm going to take the Dodgers in seven. Uh, right. I do think that you can go to FanDuel and actually bet like who wins each game, and they yeah, have some yeah, value yeah. there. So that might be something if you think like Yankees win game two, and then you know whatever it is, uh, and play it all out. But I think it'll be the Dodgers in seven. I think it's going to be a great series. It's going to be a bullpen series. I think the Dodgers have a really good bullpen, and they're going to go to those relievers, middle relievers. They're going to save and win some games. And I just want. Shohei versus Judge, you know. I want I some know, big everybody moments. Everybody wants that, but it's going to be Tommy Edmund. It's a triple in Game <laughs> know, 6, right. and that'll be it. Mac, Mac, Max worst, Muncy worst is... guy in sports. Yeah, who, oh. <laughs> Sal's upset, so yeah. we won't talk too much more Thank about you. it. Last thing, Sal, the Tate debate. Um, we'll keep this simple. This is uh, something that I saw this weekend. It kind of grinded my gears. Uh, you know, got me a little upset, Sal. So I say to you, defenders should be allowed a hall pass to hit quarterbacks who fake slide or fake go down or fake go out of bounds. Pass 
Pat Mahomes got away with it this weekend and he got an extra 10 yards. Mm. And I do think that after that happens, he should have to put like a scarlet letter on Ooh. his jersey okay. that says the next time that he is out uh, outside the pocket and he is a runner, he's been deemed a runner, he can take a hit without a flag, a real hit. Like and uh, Brady used to take big hits. Mm-hmm. Peyton Manning used to take big hits. I mean, even Cam Newton used to get absolutely rocked out there and he never got that same protection. So Mahomes... It's time. He needs to take a hit. Here's the thing. I understand both sides of the argument, right? Mm-hmm. Mahomes is the best at figuring out angles to the corner, to the flag, whatever. Nobody's ever been better than and just he ran over Mustafa, you know? So he Running had his guys moment. over, embarrassing right. them. It's kind of, I get that. Then And then he plays the thing where he toes the line and then doesn't. So I wonder if a coach should be able, in addition to a challenge flag, have like a Kermit puppet that he could throw mm-hmm. out. And like, hey, if we're flagged for, we're, we're going to use this. Okay, that flag gets <laughs> right. picked up, and that's good. On the other hand, I can see why they're protecting him. You don't want Snoop Huntley's and Pat Boyle. We don't want anybody hurt. You know, it right. needs to be a clean hit. That's right. the thing. It can't be okay. a, a vicious, dirty hit. Uh, you win the debate. You win the tape <laughs> debate. That's fine. <laughs> I, just, just, I just think, you know, you, you start playing with fire, Go ahead. you're going to eventually that. get burnt. You know what I mean? Wow. Oh, my God. <laughs> Got to get burnt. I've never heard anything like that. Get burnt. Eventually, God, you're gonna have to get burnt. All right, uh, all let's right. get burnt. <laughs> yeah, let's get burnt. So, where can we find all your work? And uh, we'll against the odds, a couple times a week on the Ringer Podcast right. Network. Cousin Sal's winning weekend with Dwight Gooden coming oh, up. Yeah. yeah, that's Friday right here on Fandle TV. And what do we have? Oh, the Ringer pregame show uh, on Sundays, Sundays. on great. Fandle TV as well. Sal, Check you're the best. Out. Appreciate Thanks, you buddy. coming on the show. Stay tuned. We'll be bar- right back with the press box's very own Brian Curtis. Welcome back to Through the Ringer. We are joined by a very esteemed guest now. We got the Ringer's very own Brian Curtis in the building. BC, good to see you. Great to see you, Tate. How you doing, man? I'm doing well. I know it was a tough weekend down in Austin, Ooh. Texas, uh, for all the Long Longhorn faithful out there. You were there in person, boots on the ground. Just general thoughts. I mean, this was uh, a big time. I mean, everybody. You got A-list stars everywhere. Uh, Kirby Smart said he didn't come there for the party, but it was a party down in Austin. It was. Have you ever had a perfect weekend, maybe in Chapel Hill, that <laughs> yeah. was just ruined by a sporting event. Oh, yes. Too many to cut. Yeah, too many. Everything went well. The barbecue was delicious. The breakfast right. tacos were good. As you point out, we had Matthew McConaughey and Glenn Powell. Right. We had old Matthew and young Matthew right there. Everybody. Young Sheldon, Duda Lipa Sheldon. is wearing a Texas jersey. I mean, my goodness. Everybody was back. Right. And then Texas played a terrible football game. It was down 23 <laughs> nothing and a half. And we're all sitting there. Some of us who paid several hundred dollars for tickets are going, oh. what are we doing? What happened? Yeah. It was supposed to be be something special. It was supposed to be a coronation of sorts. But again, it was kind of the first real SEC stage for Texas football. And I will say this, Texas fans did make it known that they can change calls in a game. That was uh, We saw history. <laughs> I'm a big man uh, and I believe in precedent. A uh, big believer in precedent. We did see some precedent set there that maybe you can change a call in the, in the SEC. Is that a good thing? It's unbelievable. My buddy <laughs> who I went to the game with is you know a very successful businessman. Right. So we were at UT together and he went the financially successful so Smart guy. And I'm here with you, <laughs> yeah, so that's right. what that happened. But he is a, a high school referee on the side, and let me tell you something. He was his mind was blown. He mm-hmm. was almost upset on behalf of refereeing mm. that they would change that call after people threw bottles on the field. And of course, if they hadn't thrown bottles on the field, if our fans had not done that, yes. the, the call never gets changed. Florida, I mean, Georgia snaps the ball, and here we go. It was a literal delay of game uh, created by the fans, and it led to a change call. Kirby Smart almost lost his mind. Uh, I thought oh. his head was going to explode in real time, but that was really the biggest takeaway of the game outside of the game not being as billed, right? It wasn't the best football game. Both quarterbacks who were supposed to make their Heisman statements, instead mm-hmm. they came out and were basically moot. moot you know, they didn't, they didn't <laughs> have anything got to benched. say. <laughs> right. Yeah, so that it wasn't was a good. Great. Can we talk about that? Uh, there was, I felt like, a Disney movie happening in real time. Texas is struggling on offense. They can't get anything going. The Georgia D-line is dominating. Arch Manning gets put in the game. He has a few early runs, some scampers that get you excited. In the building, did you see kind of the Texas fans in real time, the wheel spinning of like, this is the beginning of the Arch Manning era? Oh my God, you could, you could really feel the Disney movie happening because we didn't know, mostly because we weren't paying attention, <laughs> but we didn't know until he ran onto the field with the offense mm-hmm. when he came in the second quarter. And all of a sudden, I just, I don't know how to describe 
of a buzz and excitement. Everybody slapping. I said, there's arch, there's arch. Palpable buzz. That's literally right. what I said to my buddy, the referee. <laughs> there's arch, there's arch. And we're, so we're like, we're going to win. Mm-hmm. He's going to come in. He's going to know what to do. And he had like one great scramble. He drew a face mask, which was one of Texas's best offensive plays of the first half. Right. But that was about it. Texas still couldn't move the ball, and then we went back to Quinn Ewers. I think they should have waited until halftime and then come out in the second half with Arch because if you start that second half with Arch running onto the field after a terrible first half, dismal would probably be the right word, Everyone gets kind of juiced up, but when he didn't succeed, then they go back to yours. It kind of just it was it was like you were in limbo for the rest of the game. Yeah. Was there a moment during the lead up? You went to game day. We can talk about that a little bit. Was there a moment where you started to get concerned because you're like it's a little too perfect? You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean the day was so perfect that I figured something would ruin it. <laughs> yeah, right. I started out. You'll love this, Ted. I went that, to that's the, what being a college fan is, by the way. I know because you know? you're just like you've never been more concerned about <laughs> right. feng shui and just like what's going yeah. on. Am I doing things right? <laughs> the morning of, I went to the souvenir store you'll appreciate this and i was gonna buy an arch jersey oh right i haven't i haven't owned a texas jersey i still have my old ones but i haven't owned one since vince young it was there by the way who was there it was like 20 years later might be time to freshen it up and then i'm like brian this guy is like 19 years old and you're gonna buy his jersey that just feels so creepy in a way like am i too old to a buy any jersey and b buy arch manning's jersey i think you say it's for your kid right but you just kind of keep it hung up at home (laughs) it's my size (laughs) how old is your how old is your kid don't don't grow into it (laughs) yeah i was like i think i can wear retro i think i can wear vince i think i can wear ricky williams right i think that's the way to go if i want a texas jersey yeah garrett gilbert uh yeah (laughs) that was i didn't get in my closet so no. <laughs> Something like that. Uh, the game day experience, college game day in Austin, mm. the SEC first game day experience. What was that like? Did it feel surreal? Did it feel like it fit? Because from the outside looking in, it, it did look right, you know, for lack of a better it word. It does. It, it feels very natural, you know. And mm. when you had the college game day as in the ESPN show experience, of course, it's out there. It's on the next to the tower. There are fireworks going off at the end of the show when yeah, they do right. their picks. They got a big Texas flag out there because Texans are not shy about their flag. <laughs> let's, uh, let's put that out there in case anybody doesn't know. But yes, it felt very natural. And it was funny seeing Georgia fans around Austin. There were a ton. Yeah, of course. That's another one of those game day feels where you're like, uh-oh, suspiciously high number of visiting fans. <laughs> they, they, they feel good about this game. Yeah, right? that's when yeah. you're like, ooh, they all paid to come to Austin. That was a moment. But you're looking around and going, were we in the, were we in a league with Iowa State fans last year? Mm. That really happened? Was Oklahoma State one of our rivals last year? Because this just feels very natural. Yeah, and Georgia fans that were there uh, were very excited after the fact because Kirby Smart, he likes to go back to uh, his old <laughs> faithful of nobody believed in us, right? He is nobody the king. believed in us. <laughs> he was talking about all the actors, all that. He was like, they, they can be over there and have a nice celebration, but we're about the football. Is it still a brand win for Texas to have that sort of scene? Even though you don't win the football game, it did feel like still sort of a weird moral victory for Texas. I think so. But you know what? I, I do I do sympathize with Kirby because I did feel a little bit of too much. Mm-hmm. You know, Kevin Durant and Scotty Scheffler on the sidelines. Right. Right. Matthew McConaughey. Joe and Rogan Glenn Powell. on the sidelines. Joe Rogan. That was a <laughs> yeah. that was a wild card. That was yeah. When I saw him with Sark, I was like, I think we've jumped the shark here. Yeah. Them walking out of their <laughs> locker room, which looks like a nightclub now, and has Longhorns mm. and orange on the black wall. Yeah. You know, and you're kind of going like. This feels very produced, mm-hmm. um, which is great as long as you win the game. And when you lose, it looks kind of silly. Yeah, and that's uh, the, the hard part. If we're looking at the national championship odds right now, Georgia is the favorite at plus 330. Ohio State right behind them at plus 450. Oregon plus 500. Um, I assume Oregon's going to be the number one team in the country, but they have the third best odds right now. How do you feel about Texas uh, in the mix? Do you think they're still a national championship type team? Do they have to figure out Ewers versus Arch? Like, where do we stand right now? Yeah, if they get the QB figured out I do because it just feels like there's a lot of teams that are pretty similar this year and we always love to do this in college football we mm. love to overread the first five of weeks but, oh my gosh it's over <laughs> yeah they won the national channel like, well, there is going to be a 12 team <laughs> tournament but right. it's also going to do- you know introduce a lot of uncertainty into this so I just feel like everybody and you could feel this with on the Texas message boards after the game get to the tournament and then figure it out. Right. Right. As long as you get in and, and there's going to be some two lost teams in this tournament this year. I believe that I believe that that will be the case alongside the teams you just mentioned. Mm-hmm. Get into the tournament and then who knows? Yeah. See where the chips may fall. The Big Ten is going to have the new number one team in the country. Obviously, it's a new addition in Oregon. Uh, SEC just had that a new Still addition weird in to Texas. Say, by the way. <laughs> I know. <laughs> do you feel like if I was you're, like, no, no, Tate, Ohio State's I, not number one. Yeah, oh, wait. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So do you feel like the Big Ten, if you talk to Big Ten people in your life, they're very much like we are the football conference. 
Do you feel like that's actually a real conversation or do we just have to let that, you know, kind of happen for a couple of weeks before it gets, you know, sort of righted? Yeah, I guess we do. I mean, look, the football there's been good. You know, SC Penn State was really fun. Mm-hmm. A couple of weeks ago, they got the number one team in the nation. They got the defending national champion. So, OK, I guess we give that review for a few yeah, more weeks. Right. I mean, the Big Ten SEC thing is really fun. Because, you know, college football, look, there's something fun about everything being scattered, but there's also something fun about, like, choice A or choice B, Midwest or South, Mm -hmm. Big Ten SEC. I like that. And I will say the SEC, and I think the Big Ten fans don't want to hear this, but the SEC picked them to be their number two. You know what I mean? Like, this is, uh, they made a choice. They were like, we have to cut out the ACC, who is in the same region, and we have to pick (laughs) someone that is willing to be our number two. Not going as they planned so far, because like I said, right now, the Big Ten is sitting in that number one spot. I do want to talk Heisman quickly. Um, Do we have a front runner? Like, I mean, Ashton Genty is obviously one. Cam Ward, um, who had a great game against Louisville. But like, is there anyone one that's kind of standing out where you're like, he looks like the guy who should be the Heisman. So we always remember it's a December award, right? Not a January <laughs> award. And I look, there is a path for Cam Ward to go 10 and one or 10 and two, excuse me, or 11 and one, right? And be, you know, right there with mm-hmm. a really compelling resume. He makes Miami really good. And Miami know? would not be good without Cam no, Ward. Miami's giving up a lot of I points, know, including exactly. Louisville over the weekend. Um, so, yeah, I mean, he, to me, I would love to see how many Boise State games people have actually watched mm-hmm. when assembling these Heisman I've rankings. I've watched one. I watched Wazoo. Okay. Uh, that was so the you one. Got one. Yeah, I got I'm one. still at, I'm still at zero. Say, no offense. Ashton but. Ginty was incredible. He ran for like nine yards of carry. I'm like, this guy is unstoppable. It'd be fun to have a, a, that kind of guy win the Heisman. I feel like we haven't had that in a while, or even as a finalist, like a real mm-hmm. candidate. It's been, it's, been a, it's been a bit. We're going to take a quick break. I know you saw that coming. We'll be back here on Through the Ringer, and we will talk to Brian Curtis about the MLB playoffs. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Through the Ringer. I'm still your host, Tate Frazier. We're still here with the Press Box's very own Brian Curtis, and this is good news for the press and good news for all the people that are fans of baseball. We got the two biggest brands in the sport in the World Series, Yankees, Dodgers. Let's start there, Brian Curtis. Is this the godsend that all the baseball fans in the world really needed? Absolutely, and not only because it's the two biggest cities and two biggest brands, it's the two best teams in mm-hmm. baseball, and it's been a while. And they're kind of likable. No disrespect to the yeah. Texas Rangers and Arizona Diamondbacks, but those were not the two best teams in baseball last right. year in the World Series. You got big stars. You got Aaron Judge. You got Otani. It is going to be fun. And it's interesting because I feel like my entire second half of my life has been a conversation about what is wrong with baseball. <laughs> yes. Can we save baseball? Is baseball yes. dead? Is it dying? Here is the test case state. Yankees, Dodgers. What more could you want? And you're going to see how big the audience really is for the MLB, right? To see, at least for the people in the actual office themselves, to look at the ratings, look at the numbers and say, when we had the two biggest brands, the two biggest stars, this is where we really max out. And hopefully for their sake, they get six or seven games. What, like, from the Shohei Judge aspect of this, like, I mean, do we need these guys to be, like, hitting home runs back and forth? Like, do they need to have a great series for us to really be invested? Yeah, I think so, or at least some really big Mm at-bats, right? You know, late innings, runners on base, chance to be a hero at-bats, right? Like, that to me is when it's funny, because I am a lapsed baseball fan. Like, Mm -hmm. I think just about everybody in my age group is, or let's just say, there's some people that hung in there, but those of us who had, like, 87 tops cards, who thought baseball was the coolest thing, when Kirk Gibson. Speaking of the Dodgers, went mm-hmm. yard in game one of the 88 World Series. It was like, this is the biggest sports moment of my lifetime. And still is one of my top five. And you still remember it. Absolutely. Right. I mean, it was just like chills. But what gets me back is when you have those World Series matchups where it's like, here we go. Big, big spot late. And there were a couple of these mm-hmm. in, uh, in the playoffs so far. But just like big spot late, big hitter up. Here we go. And you get the, the there's another angle of this with Dave Roberts and Aaron Boone. It's like the Red Sox Yankees kind of backlog, <laughs> which is also the greatest rivalry in the sport as well. Like you have every single box kind of checked here. Yeah. And two very embattled managers. Right. Too. Exactly. Who have had their highs, have had their lows, they've had well, plenty of friction, you know, right? Back and forth with the fan base. Uh, Mookie Betts is also probably the most likable star in MLB. You get him in this series. So as far as like the intrigue from the narrative sense, 
sense. It, it's at the highest level possible. Uh, the people that are going to be going to these games, I mean, with these ticket sales and all this sort of stuff, I mean, how much is that going to be in Cairo? I feel like we're going to see that every single game. It's like, this ticket is, you know, insert amount of thousands of dollars to get in the building, right? As long as we got Mary Hart in the shot for every Dodger game, which I just love. I was yeah. like, as long as my wife was like, Mary Hart's back, just so you know, just right. update. Apatow's been back there. Apatow's been did all He's over been the place. Great. Yeah, J- Jason Bateman as well. Yeah, right? he was. we had like a mm-hmm. Jason Bateman slow-mo, I feel, in game yeah. six, where it was like, you know, we're usually like, <laughs> He's looking like Teen Wolf over there. He still, did. Man. It looked Looking like good. Kirk Gibson, like yeah, you know, right. coming down the first baseline. That was unbelievable. <laughs> it is funny, and I feel like the cool, the interesting thing about baseball too is some of the games, some of these big games, feel like they're slightly hidden from the public. Mm-hmm. We had a Dodgers Mets series. That's not nothing in the NLCS. And as people are right. pointing out, it was on FS1, and the Mass Singer was on Fox. And you're like, are you trying to hide the games from people? Do you want people to watch these games? You know, like, and that's, I think, part of the thing with baseball, right? It's not just, look, tastes have changed. The sport has changed. The Mm. world has changed around baseball. But also, you got to give it the best chance to succeed, right? Yeah. Now, here we go. It'll be on Big Fox. Everybody can watch. It should be great. It should be great. I'm excited to see, uh, just one last thing on the baseball. I'm excited to see Derek Jeter, A-Rod, and Poppy uh, Mm -hmm. with Burkhardt after. Kevin Burkhardt, by the way, doing the Lord's work. He's got Brady (laughs) in football. He's got these guys. Have you enjoyed sort of that trio of guys breaking down the game? Because it is funny. Like, A-Rod, to me, is you know, this is my opinion, uh, is the best kind of like TV personality of that group. But Jeter is right there, and Jeter is kind of like, you know, got a little bit of jealousy, right? And then, like, their, their rapport with the three of them has just been absolutely hysterical to watch, at least in my opinion. I think we see a little pattern with Fox's hiring practices. Tom Brady, Derek <laughs> Jeter, Alex Rodriguez, Big Pie. We're going for big names. Yes. P. Rose, R.I.P. was a part right. of the cast so for a they, while. They like big splashes. They right? like big splashes. Yeah, it, it's it's fun because, first of all, I think the, the interesting sort of subtext there is here's the era a link to the era when baseball was still very front and center Mm -hmm. yankees red sox Mm -hmm. 2000s right right, where you could still captivate everybody all you had to say was yankees red sox everybody's like i'm in i'm here here are the representatives from that era saying no 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 watch these guys too they're almost vouching for them in a way and sitting right next to each other like being friendly with Mm -hmm. each other which also still kind of throws me off when like big poppy's like slapping a rod on the back like (laughs) hucking it up you know what i mean it's very fascinating but baseball this is a great stage for them very excited to see how this all plays out game starts on Friday, so stay tuned in, and luckily, like you said, they're not going to be shelving these games. They're actually going to put them out front and center. Last thing before we let you go, Brian, we got the Lions se- last season, final season of NBA on TNT <laughs> before we move over to the new rights deal, so it's the last time we're going to see Barkley, Kenny, Shaq, Ernie, that quartet, as far as we know. I mean, obviously, something can be figured out. What do we expect? The NBA season just kicked off. What do we expect this year? Do we expect Charles Barkley to be shooting from the hip? Like, What's our general thoughts on this crew? Yeah, I think he'll be, you know, there'll be a lot of winky winky references to it mm-hmm. that Ernie will probably try to steer out of. Of course. Yeah. Knowing that he does not want to do spend a season talking about how it's a last season, but I think they'll probably embrace it as they get later on. You know, you can imagine the spring, especially before the playoffs. Like it's a big cultural event in America. Mm-hmm. Right. It sucks, but it's also just like like this is a long running, very popular television show that is, as far as we know, going off the air. So to me, you want a little bit of the goodbye episodes. You want some memories. You want some tape Mm -hmm. of the old days, right? This is what we do on television. This is how we send a show off into the night. And, uh... I think we'll see a little bit of that. Yeah, I need some throwback footage, like you said. I also need a camera crew to follow them around Last Dance style and have Jason Hare maybe direct a documentary about this final season. I, <laughs> I would watch that. That would be great, right? I we mean, see Barkley's Barkley like, just talking, right? Like, of that's course. great. And, and then watching games is some of the best, you know, just talking to people that work there. They're like, that's the best. We do. We obviously don't see that, but they're like, that's the best part mm-hmm. of the show is watching these guys react in real time to Anthony Edwards, Game 7 in Denver, you know, Charles Barkley yes. being like, we're going to Minnesota. Like, yeah, that was amazing. <laughs> and that's when we know know he's actually watched basketball right, right. between between shows we're not totally sure we're like hey did you watch this week yeah. because we can't quite tell but that's when we know he watched in the playoffs we know that's gonna that's gonna happen uh brian where can we find all your work and then we'll let you go into the rest ringer.com of the day. press box every monday and thursday in the ringer podcast network it's the best podcast we love it so much uh kyle my producer we we talk about the press box all the time so brian you're the best we appreciate you coming on the show and uh we'll be right back after the break Right, there you have it another edition of through the ringer thanks to cousin sal as always and thanks to the ringer's very own brian curtis we appreciate you watching the show and we will see you next week